According to the Pentagon, NORAD first detected this latest unidentified unmanned object uh, over Alaska on Friday evening. As they monitored it and tracked where it was going, it did cross into Canadian airspace space. At some point today, President Biden and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau both spoke. They had both been monitoring the situation for the last 24 hours, and they ultimately decided that out of an abundance of caution, they wanted to follow the advice of their military leaders and authorize the shooting down of this object. Now, at this point, once this operation was underway, it was ultimately an American F-22 fighter jet that shot down this unidentified object over uh, Canada. Now, there's still so many questions uh, about what exactly this object entailed, include, including the size, uh, its origin, and its purpose. And a few moments ago, the defense minister of Canada uh, talked a little bit about what they know at this moment. Recovery operations are now underway and will be supported by the Canadian Armed Forces in conjunction with the RCMP. This coordinated operation will allow a further investigation into this object. We have no further details about the object at this time other than it appears to be a small cylindrical object and smaller than the one that was downed off the coast of North Carolina. There is no reason to believe that the impact of the object in Canadian territory is of any public concern. Now, there's uh, some details that she shared there that they felt were different from the object that was downed uh, just last week. Uh, it's also worth noting that the object uh, that was over uh, off the Alaskan coast yesterday and then today, that those are flying at about 40,000 feet. At, at that point, there's some concern that there uh, could be some uh, impact for civilian aircraft. Now, just to recap, there's this object today. Yesterday, there was another unidentified object near the coast of Alaska that President Biden ordered have to have shot down and then just one week prior we were here talking about uh, that suspected Chinese spy balloon uh, that was off the Carolina coast that President Biden had ordered shot down as well now there still uh, are so many questions about these latest two unidentified objects uh, and, and who exactly they belong to whether it's a country whether it's a private entity right now what the focus will be is on the recovery missions for both uh, the one that was shot down today and the one shot down yesterday to try to determine as much information as they possibly can, be, can about their origin and also the purpose. All right, Arlette Signs, uh, we know you'll stay on top of it. Thanks so much. Uh, joining us now to talk about this, you know, transportation analyst Mary Schiavo. She's also a former inspector general for the Department of Transportation. Uh, Mary, uh, where do we begin? Let's, let, I guess let's start with uh, some of the information that was coming from the Canadian defense minister. Uh, just a few moments ago, because I have, uh, you know, I, I listened to that press conference and I had lots of questions. First of all, this Canadian defense minister said that the object that is, I guess, uh, of interest here in all of this that was shot down over the skies in Canada earlier today was cylindrical in shape. That was the that is the exact word she used. She said cylindrical in shape. She said it was flying at about 40,000 feet. Going back to the conversation you and, had, you and I had earlier this evening, you can't have objects uh, flying that low. It could uh, get in the way of civilian aircraft, obviously. But what is your sense of it, listening to that kind of information, particularly the shape of this object? That is very odd. Well, it's very odd, you know, if you're looking for a uh, traditional balloon or an aircraft, but throughout history, there have been many cylindrical flying objects, uh, okay. not to mention dirigibles, and there have been rigid form dirigibles. They don't have to be just a, a gossamer balloon, so to speak. So the fact that no one has reported that the object took evasive action, it suggests that perhaps it was not being remotely controlled, perhaps it was moving with the winds, etc., but Right now, it could be a lot of things, not to mention, as, as mentioned before, it could be a rigid form, uh, form of a balloon or other object uh, that have been used both by the United States and other countries in the past. Uh, what is, I guess one of the questions that I have, Mary, is why is it, here we are about a day, I mean, more than a day after this object was shot down uh, off the coast of Alaska, we still haven't been told any information as to the specifics of what that object was. And, you know, then we have this other object shot down today. It's very peculiar. 
Right. Well, I can tell you from firsthand experience, since I've been up here working in Alaska for yeah. about two, two and a half weeks on another plane case, air crash case, uh, the weather's really bad. Um, mm. well, not bad per se. There's just a lot of snow. It's a bit windy. It's very cold. It's very foggy. So between the snow and the fog and you're trying to lie, land on, they said it was, a, you know, an ice pack, an ice island. Um, even for our great, you know, uh, aviators and, and uh, seafarers in the U.S. military, that's tough. And so the weather here is rather uh, obscured, so to speak, and the snow is coming down heavily in Anchorage. So it may just be that they can't get to this object in a safe way uh, and that right. this is just a dicey kind of operation to go and inspect it. Because what Natasha Bertrand, our, our national security reporter, was telling us earlier on this program was that the pilots who were trying to fly up close to this object in Alaska yesterday were having different accounts, offering different accounts as to what they saw. So I, I suppose the elements, to your point, might be a factor in all of this. Right. Visibility is rather poor. I mean, I'm working very close to an airport, and believe me, it's all IFR, instrument flight rule operations right now. Uh, planes that are taking off, they disappear into the clouds very quickly, especially with snow coming down. So the fact that the pilots uh, couldn't identify it, particularly if it was, for example, a rigid form of an airship, uh, a, you know, a, a dirigible, so to speak, yeah, they wouldn't have had any occasion to see those over the last uh, decade or so or a couple decades. So I think that they're just having difficulty actually getting eyes on and the equipment that they use to shoot them down obviously does not depend upon human eyes to have eyes on. They have the, the ability to do that, you know, with their or their computers. So I think that the visibility is a big issue up here. All right, Mary Schiavo, thanks so much uh, for springing into action for us. Uh, we've added an additional hour of CNN Newsroom this evening. We appreciate it. Uh, Paula Newton uh, joins me on uh, the phone. Uh, Paula, I, I guess, uh, you know, you and I had just a brief couple of moments to parse through what the Canadian defense minister was saying during that press conference. But I, I want to go back and reiterate what she said um, just about 20 or 30 minutes ago, and that is that this object was flying at about 40,000 feet. It was over the Yukon uh, territory um, and that it was some it was in it was cylindrical. It was a small cylindrical object, which obviously sounds very strange. Uh, but as Mary Schiavo was saying, there might be some per perfectly fine explanations for that. But your impressions as to how much information you're getting from the Canadian side of things, we're not getting a whole lot from the American side at this point. Yeah, no, and if Canadian officials wanted to get ahead of this, obviously, because it was shot down over Canadian airspace, and it was up to them to make these kinds of, you know, pronouncements, really, to say what was shot down, exactly what was going on, and the fact that it was shot down about four and a half hours ago now, and that they were going through the debris field to try and ascertain what it is. I think there were a couple of significant things, and I think, and Anita Anand, the defense minister, um, saying that it was at 40,000 feet, right? And that gives us some explanation as to why they decided that it had to be brought down. Now, we're showing a map right now of Yukon. That is a huge territory. She said it was shot down uh, uh, in central Yukon. Um, you know, it, it's going to take a while to really determine where it came down, even though they, I'm sure they had line of sight on it, but to obviously pick it up and then analyze it. Um, this is going to be a joint operation. It is obviously Canadian forces right now that are doing that kind of, um, uh, that kind of investigation right now, but in conjunction with the RCMP, Canada's National Police Force, and in fact, the FBI uh, and and, you know, U.S. forces as well. So was it the same kind of object uh, that was shot down over Alaska by the United States? Might have been. I think uh, many questions right now would be that the minister, Anita Nen went out of her way to say to us, Jim, that this was unprecedented, an unprecedented action on the part of NORAD to shoot something like this down um, over uh, Canadian airspace. The question she did not answer was whether or not they have seen uh, objects like this before in their radar. Right. Uh, she went on to say, obviously, that they're going to be really beefing up their surveillance there. That does involve an entire new security infrastructure up there that they have been working on for years. But I also, Jim, want to point out something that Secretary Austin uh, said in me after meeting um, with uh, 
Defense Minister Ananda in Washington uh, just yesterday, and, and that he referenced the increasing assertiveness uh, of China. Now, while they were talking about China because of the spy balloon that was shot down off the uh, Carolina coast, at issue is that they know they have other actors I in uh, the Arctic, uh, Russia being just one, um, and, and they do see a more robust defense uh, structure that needs to be put in place there. But I thought that language was quite strong uh, on the part of the secretary, saying it with Anita Anand together, that is, is this, it's this assertiveness that bothers them. So certainly uh, a menacing factor now, three objects, high al al altitude, and uh, taking action on all three.